Okay, hi everyone and welcome back to the Digital Nomads World Weekly Lecture. Um, I'm Becca and I'm your host and today I will be speaking with James and Claire um, who are the co-founders of the fitness award-winning fitness company 38 Degrees North. So welcome James and Claire. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you. Thank Thanks you for having us. Here. Yeah, thank you for agreeing to chat with me today. Um, I think it's really interesting what you guys do and I'd love to learn more and kind of share that with our community. So um, I'm going to start with just asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. So where are you from and where are you currently located or based? Uh, great <laughs> question. <laughs> so we're, we're, well, I guess we've, we've both been living in London for like uh, 20 years plus. So I guess we say we're from, we're from London mm -hmm. and we are currently in London. But two weeks ago, we were in Marbella. At the moment, we split our time between London and Marbella. Um, it used to be Ibiza as well, which it will be again. But obviously, um, the last two years has been a bit challenging for, for travel and movement. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, the world is opening up again. But yeah, we, we split our time effectively between Spain and the UK at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so um, I guess let's start at the beginning of your journey. How did you get to this point where you've got half your time in Spain and half in the UK? Well, you left your job to start over in Ibiza about 10 years ago. And then I joined James. Um, I gave up my normal life um, and joined him about six and a half years ago. Yeah. So it's about six and a half years of this kind of lifestyle for me and longer for you. About 11 years for me. But um, yeah, I guess like a, a lot of people watching, maybe I was in that, that corporate um, role uh, and it was good, but it wasn't really feeling fulfilling so yeah took the decision to, to move to Ibiza and set up fitness holidays because I thought and that's a beautiful island I can bring people here train them and, and I'm sure I can make it viable and well 11 years later we're still there despite a pandemic yeah so, yeah absolutely days. and um, I was in a corporate career as well I was in um, PR and marketing and mm -hmm. events and all things like that and um, it wasn't until I was about 30 that I just decided to a little bit older than that, actually to just completely change my career and you know become a personal trainer and um, do my nutrition um courses and actually add that to I was already doing coaching as well so on the side of doing mm -hmm. PR I was a stress management consultant a coach a business coach and um NLP practitioner so I kind of melded it all in one and then decided yeah to move to Ibiza and, and join James on the fitness retreats so yeah that's really cool and it's interesting um that you guys kind of had your careers before and then you've transitioned into something new did you have like any um I guess background in fitness before or kind of was this a completely new like adventure you did so, yeah, I, didn't. I did so uh my background always always kind of been into, into sport and fitness uh, I kind of worked in it when I was when I way back very much younger but going into it to run a business kind of re-qualified um and then like qualified in a lot of new things as well um mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy to do so actually because yeah. part, part of the fun of the journey is still discovering things that, that light you up and, and learning things and getting qualified in new things so you can help more people yeah and um yeah for me i was never really into fitness i went to the gym but i didn't really know what i was doing and it was really sporadic it wasn't actually until um my divorce and then um, I just, my, my mental health and my physical health just went massively downhill. I, I put on a, quite a lot of weight. Um, I was put on antidepressants and I didn't want to be put, put on them forever. Um, mm -hmm. so I actually tried to find ways to make myself feel better physically, mentally and emotionally. So actually that's when I kind of discovered lifting um, and also eating properly like gut health. And mm -hmm. um, once I saw the power of that, alongside all the mindset stuff that I already did and already knew about that's when I was like oh my goodness I need to I need to re-qualify in this and start sharing it with other women and um, so that was my story yeah that's really cool that's really awesome yeah so um I guess would you mind just um for everyone that's watching kind of giving a bit of background into what 38 degrees north is yeah, so um, when I, I set it up, I basically had this at the time when we were going back like 11 years now, the kind of experience out there was this, was this boot camp approach of like, uh, we're just going to beast you really hard all day long and feed you like sub a thousand calories and it's all targeted on weight loss. And I really want to move away from that. My background also was psychology. So I like, let's bring people into a really nice nurturing environment. Let's give them like great food. Yes, there's healthy choices. But actually, if you want to splurge out and have your, your burger or your pizza, that's fine too. Because mm -hmm. we're going to educate you on nutrition. 
and give people really the, the mindset tools as well to help them, help them make sustainable changes. So that was the model we came with. It was quite disruptive at the time. It's like kind of everyone does that now, but we had immense success initially because it was, it was new things to the market, you know, partnering with five-star hotels, kind of offering this, this holistic approach, covering everything. Uh, and people love the fact, you know, you could go away and be training and then like, go for a cocktail in the evening, for example. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's an approach that works. It's, you know, obviously, Jones mentioned, obviously, two years ago, we had a bumper 2020 all laid out for us. We were 80% booked for the entire year. It was looking amazing. And then, obviously, that fell off a cliff. And I know so many businesses really, really struggled and are probably still struggling to come out of that. But, you know, we had a situation where we were like, oh, my goodness, you know, the right thing to do is, obviously, to refund everyone their deposits. That's what we did. So we took the hit initially. Um, and then we actually went online, um, which we can talk about a little bit, you know, as well. But 38 mm -hmm. degrees, four, we finally ran our first retreat since that two years, last July in the UK. That was all sold out. That was amazing to be back, actually meeting people in real life, not just online. Then we got locked down again. And then we got locked down again. So we escaped <laughs> back to, to Marbella. But yeah, it's definitely, you know, we've had so many awards for our retreat business, 38 Degrees North, like it's about nine awards now, I think we've had in the last few years, um, been featured in lots of press, but it's actually, you know, it's all our TripAdvisor reviews that we love the most. It's those ones that people say, you know, what you've taught me is life changing and people coming back. We get a lot of repeat visitors because they loved it so much. Mm -hmm. They keep coming back over and over again. So it's that that's really rewarding. Yeah, for sure. So if um, if someone was going to join one of your retreats, um, are they all the same length? Like, do you have a set time? I guess, what's the structure for your, um, yeah. for your retreats? So pre-COVID, we were doing um, a selection of like a week long or a long weekend. So like a three night, four day. Mm -hmm. um, since COVID, they've all been like four day ones so yeah. far. I mean, yeah. I think um, we just wait and see how things go. But we'll, we'll go back probably to the longer format of a week as well. Um, but to be honest, I think with the time pressures people have, that it's interesting when we started, the week was definitely the most popular. People couldn't get their head around the idea of a long weekend. <laughs> but over the years, that shifted and become mm. much more popular. This idea I can just go, you know, leave, leave on a Thursday immerse myself in this it's like kind of healthy environment and learn all this stuff and then be back at work again on the monday so um the long weekend work has works really well for us yeah and it is for anyone you know we say any levels of fitness any any age i mean we predominantly i would say attract the 35 plus market even more more so because we're also known as the midlife mentors so obviously we're we're um attracting a certain demographic but um yeah it, it's any anyone that's just looking to really educate them that's what it's all about it's about educating people rather than like james alluded to it's not it's not a weight loss camp it's mm -hmm. not um all about fitness you know we have a lot of workshops where we educate people on things like even the psychology like self-identities and belief system and habits and the behavior change so um it's a lot of the inner work as well which we absolutely love yeah. So um, I guess where did the the name or the the term the midlife mentors come from, or oh, a bit of like, history about that? Uh, Thirty eight degrees north came from the latitude of Ibiza, but the midlife mentors came um, on our podcast. Yeah, yes. it's our podcast. We decided to do a podcast kind of around midlife health, wellness, happiness. And now we're in the top 1.5% of global podcasts, yeah. which we're really proud of. It's been going for like two and a, two and a half years. And that was our first dip into it. And everyone seems to like the Midlife Mentors, um, like brands. And so and now, now we do a lot of online coaching and lot of online programs. We do corporate work, which is really exciting. We're going to organisations to talk about things like science of stress and all that sort of stuff. So and obviously the Midlife Mentors comes from the fact we're both midlife. <laughs> Yeah, that's really interesting. So do you get, um, would you say with your clients, you get people that are, because you said you do, like, you do coaching and stuff as well. Do you get people that are looking for perhaps a change in their careers or like, I mean, obviously one of the reasons you've ended up doing this is because you wanted to change like from the kind of corporate lifestyle to being a bit more free with where you can work and what you do for work. Do you get many people that kind of come to chat to you about that because maybe they're in like a position where they might want to change? Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I think the, the midlife, midlife is a funny time. You know, it's we get people um, at different stages of their life as mm -hmm. well. So we're not just, um, but I would say 
for the midlifers, well, anyone like even like in their 30s, 35, they're starting to like, they've had enough time behind them. And they're wondering, you know, we have such a pressure to be this, have that from society. So all these things that we gather around us, our materialistic things, our status, all of that sort of stuff. And I think particularly around midlife, we get there and you're like, okay, am I happy? I've got, I'm looking at the second act of my life. Is mm-hmm. this what I want it to look like for the, for the rest of, of my time here? And it's a real wake up call that, you know, that midlife crisis, we laugh about it and it shouldn't be called necessarily a midlife crisis, but it is like a very sobering moment where you look at it and go, okay, does all this stuff make me happy? What will make me happy? Um, and so, yeah, we attract a lot of people looking at a change in their career, a correct change in their relationship. I was going to say it's interesting because uh, we do get people come for that. Most people come initially because they wanted something about their physical appearance. So they're like, mm-hmm. they're not happy with where they are now. But actually, that's often just like a symptom of what else is going on internally, which is why the internal work is yeah. so important. Yeah, we have people going, oh, you know, I just want to lose some of this body fat, feel better in myself, more energy. And they go on to completely like change, change their career, yeah. start mm-hmm. a new business, change their relationships. Yeah. So um, it's real. We love, we love it. We love what we do. <laughs> can you, I mean, I'm sure there's some sort of like confidentiality between your clients, but can you give us like an example of like a really great success story or something like one of your favorite kind of, um, I guess, wow, clients that so you can grow? Well, yeah. actually, we can give one of them a recent one because that will come to my mind, unless you've got another one. Sarah, she's, um, my goodness, she's in her 60s actually. Um, and she did a testimonial for us. So this is out in the public arena anyway. So we're allowed to talk about it, but mm-hmm. so a video testimonial for us. And um, she, it's, she said it's like the fittest she's ever been, healthiest she's ever been. Her relationship with food has changed because that's a really important thing from, from my background. I had a really terrible, a lot of us do have quite a complicated relationship with food. Mm-hmm. Um, and her relationship with food has completely changed. She's a lot, she was wearing a dress that night that she recorded the interview with us. She's wearing a dress that she's worn once um and she looked at the mirror thought she'd never get in it again never thought she'd get in it again she like looked at herself and she went i'm smashing this that's what she said to herself in the mirror <laughs> uh, i'll give you another one we, we actually had it's really nice we get couples as well as so we had a husband and wife team i can't, mm-hmm. I can't say their name but they run an international business so they're super like time time poor they're different offering a different time zones but they came on board with us over a year, year a year and a half and, ago. and we're still working because they they love it and they actually say that we, we've completely changed their lives you know um one of them had a really bad shoulder injury, which is completely cleared up. He's mm-hmm. now um, like doing all this crazy stuff in his free time that he just loves doing. I probably can't say what it is because yeah, you can because I've done it just my he's in a band. So he's a, he's in a, a band. But um, he's now oh, he's now cool. joining the band. They're performing <laughs> live. He's got of doing his, his career as well. So this is like look, things like that, energy. and we just get messages from him going, "We're skiing, and it's the best skiing we've ever done. Thanks to how great we're feeling from the work we've done with you." So yeah, stuff like that is just so rewarding loads it's loads of yeah. main transformations yeah that's fantastic and I guess that's why you keep doing what you're doing because you're yeah. helping yeah. all these people change yeah. um so I guess um going a b- bit backwards to setting up your business so I feel like we've kind of got a bit of an understanding about what you do and what kind of clients you get um I guess why did you choose Spain and or was there a reason for choosing Spain and um I guess yeah how did you start if you kind of quit your corporate life like because I think we have lots of members that are looking to make that jump and it's quite difficult sometimes to have the confidence to just go so if you could tell us a little bit about how you got started that would be fantastic yeah um so the reason we uh, chose ibiza was um my misspent youth i used to work for ministry of sound <laughs> so i spent many summers on the island <laughs> living a very different lifestyle um, it wasn't the healthy lifestyle at all <laughs> well, I knew what a beautiful place it was and and mm-hmm. um, how great it would be to take people to do a kind of healthy reinvention so that was the reason i chose there um and i guess practically as well you know it's an easy destination for uk clients to get to yeah. so if you're thinking of setting something like this up you know if you think you're predominantly going to be looking to your home market for your clients, have a think about, oh, if I want to take people from France to Patagonia regularly, how, how feasible is that? So it can be easy to start with, like, you know, short haul destinations can be easier if you're bringing people physically to you. Mm-hmm. Um, setting up, uh, wow, 
do 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 your homework mm. but definitely do it it's so it's so rewarding you know but I, i'm not going to sugarcoat it there's massive ups and downs um but I, there, I think there can be with corporate life as well you know we i think the days of, of a corporate lifestyle being safe are gone you can sit in a job and the company can turn around and say, I'm really sorry, you know, we, we've got to make cutbacks or whatever mm -hmm. right now. If you're working for yourself, you're in charge of your own destiny. My advice would be try and get as much money saved up as you can. Um, do something you're passionate about mm -hmm. rather than just chasing money. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if you're passionate and you're consistent and you keep going, uh, and it's truly something you believe in, then you can make it a success. You can, absolutely. I totally resonate with that. I think for so many, so many years, I was trying to get out of PR. I was in it for like 14, 15 years. And I kept having what you just said there. I kept mm -hmm. doing the, you know, setting up a business in coaching or, you know, an online business or all these different things. And I kept going back to the money. I kept losing faith in myself. There were so many failed attempts um, because you know, we are told that you've got to have this secure job, you've got to pay your mortgage. I had a mortgage on my own, I just got divorced. It was all these things. But actually, when I finally jumped and I qualified doing, you know, all my health stuff, when I finally jumped, I do honestly feel like the universe rewards the brave. And it kind of held me and mm -hmm. I just held my nerve. And and like James said, the the success you get when you're passionate and you're you're chasing it for the feeling and the people you're trying to serve, it, it can't fail you in the end. It's just very up and down like this and expect that. But just keep thinking about sharing your gift with more people um, and having yourself seen and heard and how that feels and you'll make it in the end. Yeah, I was going to say as well, like um, what I found certainly, what we found uh, running our own business, necessity, necessity is the mother of invention, right? So sometimes things don't work. That's fine. You, what you can't do is take that as a massive like, or oh, I'm not cut out for this, I'm a failure. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, how do I tweak that? What's another direction I can go to? What what's else is aligned with my business? And today, when I started this originally, 2011, you know, online training, coaching wasn't a thing. So it was like actually physically get people to a location and train them. Now, of course, you know, we have a business that's, that's virtual as well as physical. Uh, and it's a lot easier. There's a lot more noise out there, I guess, now. But technology means we can leverage all these different options. We can extend our brand to other things as well. So always be open to like considering new things and, and altering your path slightly. Often the path we think we're going on might not be the one. We just have to take a little turn off every now and then. So I've got one more thing as well. Stay in your own lane. Don't compare yourself to other people. That's one of been one of my yeah, massive true. lessons. You know, like what's working for someone over there probably might not work for you because that's their passion. That's their baby. And we can get, you know, so st stuck in that place of chasing the next thing that someone else is doing, hoping it will be a success for us. The most successful thing is stuff that honestly comes from the heart and the mm -hmm. soul. Um, so be really careful. You know, the grass is greener where you water it. That's why I always mm -hmm. say, like, just stay in your own lane. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think there were some very useful tips there for people that want to get started. Um, so I guess if, um, so you had your retreats, like your physical side of the business, and then you have the virtual side. Um, you said you, you mentioned that you started your podcast in 2019. So I'm assuming that was before COVID. Did, yeah. um, did the pandemic, I guess, kind of push you into more of a virtual business oh or was that always yeah. on the cards it was always on the cards <laughs> it was always on the cards and we dipped our toes in it we had but an online here's a, here's a valuable lesson actually remember this our, our, <laughs> our cash cow business was you know the bulk of our revenue was people coming on retreat so we're kind of like oh we should definitely be doing more in the online space but our all our attention was taking up with like what our main business was and obviously covid completely changed that we didn't have that main business so kind of accelerated our business um yeah, you know it was something really positive came out of it for us but accelerated mm -hmm. our online business and took us to a place we never never would have been in or would have taken years and years to get there yeah because you did so, dally around that's the thing don't you until you're sometimes you really need a push and a shove and um covid was definitely that for us we were we did have an online presence we'd already done the midlife method which is our eight-week program as a beta but then we were dilly dallying around and spending our time on little websites and photography and videos, all these things that actually don't really matter. You just need to get out there. You just need to start. It's all this fluff around it that actually really wasn't needed. We just needed to get out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess um, 
could you explain a bit more about the virtual side of your business? So I'm assuming you were saying you're between the UK and Spain. So I'm assuming you spend the time in Spain doing the retreats and then perhaps the virtual side is from the UK. But can you tell me what kind of things you offer to your clients? Yeah, essentially we have um, for our midlife clients, we have like an eight week program we put them through. So that's actually delivered through our own app. Um, and we always say to clients, actually, it's an eight week nutritional coaching course. We don't give people diet plans because, you know, then they haven't really learned what to eat or why they've lost, lost the weight. Um, so we give them coaching on nutrition. We coach them on habits. That all flows the app. It's really intuitive. Every week they have a new module, which will be you know, like a video workshop, worksheets. And that's like around the stuff we're talking about. Like, what are the habits that are derailing me? How do I shift those? What are my limiting beliefs that I have about my ability to be this person? How do I step into that? So mm -hmm. all that kind of deep level mindset work. And then, of course, we program then individual training programs in there as well. So looking at people, we have calls with people and say, right, okay, what equipment do you have? How much time do you have for goals? And we'll design something bespoke for them that will fit into their day. Yeah, and we, so. we talk a lot about, like, hormones because, again, our hormones, from like especially for women from 35 plus, our hormones are changing all over the place um, and, and for men as well. So we talk a lot about gut health, hormones, um, all that sort of stuff. So um, they're more aware and educated about why there are changes happening to their body that they might not necessarily like. Um, but we also, we do that all year round. So we can, we do that in London. We do that in Marbella. We, the clients can join that, that online course whenever. Um, mm -hmm. Then we do corporate work. That's all online and that happens whenever. Um, and then we actually just launched our Retreat Experts online course, uh, which, which is actually mentoring. So we're helping other businesses now we're mentoring other businesses oh yeah we're loving this to we've set got... up their own retreat company like to yeah. sell it a set up sell out and we've got this amazing we just did a, a couple call. of clients yeah at the moment, so we just launched it and we just have they, they're getting so much value from it and we're loving it mm -hmm. you know, we're just like like downloading all of our knowledge 11 years 11 years of kind of like what they need and there's so yeah. many things that you miss that we made so many mistakes on that we're just loving sharing how to set up your retreats business and just scale it because you know fingers crossed that's all going to be possible now you know um so that's all online as well and we're, we're loving that side of our business now aren't we yeah so that's really cool so um essentially if someone has an idea for or a concept for running their own retreats they can um hire you as mentors to help them yeah. build their business yeah yeah and that's it's really um cool. It's so exciting because all the, the business ideas are so different. So yeah. we're getting like this amazing vibe of these people that are going to go out and really like change change people's lives. You know, they're they've got got their own skills and they're going to be sharing their knowledge, sharing their passion with more people. So it's great for us knowing that we're helping touch those other people indirectly. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. And that that must be feel really rewarding being able to yeah, share. Really your um your experiences with other people to then see them build their businesses as well um we've started getting in some questions the first one is um what are some of the major difficulties you find um that people try to overcome when they join your retreats oh so um, yeah, <laughs> do you know what? For, mo for most people, like, we all know, right? Basically, it does go around to like if if you want to be healthier, you should move your body more and and be a bit more conscious about what you're eating. Mm -hmm. So what it tends to be, people have just fallen into bad habits, their motivations dropped off, or they're stuck on just believing that that they can't do it. So that I say, like the retreats, we do a lot of active work but most of it is actually coaching people through, through this kind of stuff you know like you know what identifying what the habits are how we shift those what the limiting beliefs are how we shift those and get into a place where when they leave that retreat they're like right not only do i know what i should be doing but mentally i know what i should be doing i'm fired up to go to go and do it and stay the course yeah absolutely. um you know and particularly with covid you know uh, we, saw, we saw a big increase because obviously everyone was mm -hmm. locked down at home and that led to a lot of, of bad habits beginning for a lot of people. You know, it was like, oh, I can't go out. I'm anxious because of the state of the world and the news. So I'm feeling a bit low. And of course, what I'll turn to is like just going to the fridge, seeing what's Alcohol. there. Yeah. Drink. So, so helping people unwind those back again post, post lockdown also, I mean, it's, it's, it's really rewarding as well. But that's, that's the kind of work we do. 
Yeah, I bet you've seen a, a huge change, um, perhaps in the like the difficulties that the clients come with since COVID, yeah. because it's proposed so many different um, things on people for sure. Um, the next question is, what are some tips and advice you would give for someone starting a similar business? The retreats business. Mm. Um, um, I would say, like we've said already, like follow your passion, but follow your USP. Really think about what's what's making your experience different. And what we say to people is, you can get very caught up in like, oh, you know, what's my brand? What's today? Always come back to what what's the result? What's the outcome for the client when they leave your experience? What are they What are they feeling? What have they gained? What are they going away with? So always come back to that. Um, and then model everything around that. Yeah, I was like, get to know your client really, really well mm -hmm. because you know what you people get really stuck around this. You know, if you're if you're going after new mums, um, then that's going to be really hard for them to find time away from their children. So you're not going to necessarily want to go for school holidays, or if you're going for mums just generally. So really, really think about your location, think about your timing, your length of retreat. Um, all based on what your client, who your client is. Yeah, and I'll say a link to that. Um, don't be afraid to really niche it down, niche it right? down. because um, we, everyone is like, oh, maybe they say, oh, I want to do um, an ayahuasca experience, but who's it for? It's for everyone. Well, then what makes you different? Mm -hmm. Like, really nail it down. Like, oh, this is an experience for stress, stress out business executives people. Yeah. between 45 and 60 who work in the health tech mm, sector because yeah. when you start that you then you can start all your messaging will flow from there and these people will really start talking to them so don't be afraid that the more you niche it down the smaller your pool's getting um that's exactly what you want to do because then those people feel like you're speaking directly to them it's when you're like oh we'll do anything for anyone that you start to lose traction i've also just got one more tip make sure that you've got your finances right uh, yeah. <laughs> make sure you've got your finances sorted because people yeah, get this all the time you know they 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 don't actually understand you know if you're hiring a venue you're going to have to pay that venue pretty much um you know pretty in much advance, right up in yeah. advance and up front what happens if you don't fill those rooms where are you breaking even what how many clients you need to get to break even um all those sorts of things know your figures inside out because you can get really really yeah. stuck otherwise and know your legals as well people don't necessarily know all the legals behind um having setting up a retreat but you do need them to cover your back yeah, that's really useful tips, actually. Um, I guess, do you have any, um, did you have any learning curves? Like, did you have any experiences like with finances or like a, a, a story that might be funny now, but at the time was, you know, a huge challenge for you that you'd be happy no, to, I mean, to start? Too many, like, too many honestly, loads, loads and loads and loads. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes, um, you know, there'd be some times where you're running a retreat and you're you're only making, we we never like, lost money running a retreat because we've actually had a model that ensured that we didn't lose money but there were some retreats where you know like you've you've done all you can and actually you're making a really small amount so that can be disheartening sometimes and then you need to go back and look at why that happened like you might have got your timings wrong it might actually be you know it's a we've done this we've run it over a school holiday before for mm. example and realize that that doesn't work but then conversely we run it at different times and then that doesn't work so well so it's about it's about taking those hits and making sure that you yeah. learn from them. i'd also say on the legal side of things you know if if anyone's like a personal trainer or, or working at people uh fitness wise make sure that you have got your legal sorted and that you are covered because um yeah sometimes we've heard a story where you know someone's been on a retreat and then blames that that them for ruining their back and then they've gone after them legally so you have to you have to be really really careful these days the reality yeah. is like the longer you run a business when you're when you're dealing with like a, a large volume of people at some point you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna have get something. complaints you're gonna get yeah. you know, complaints. Yeah. Yeah. it's just part of running a business like yeah. i said my other last tip is like i said claire said know your numbers but especially like make sure you're putting your tax aside because that's the thing that could catch you oh out. yeah that we've done that once as well oh Oh God, we've got to pay tax. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> have you um have you had any like major challenges? Um, I guess like is your business registered in the UK or did you set up in Spain? Have you had issues with that? Okay. Um, or do you have any advice you would give to anyone looking? Yeah, so it's obviously a little bit more if you're working in Europe, I know this this audience is worldwide, um, but I guess the, the the advice would stand for anywhere, but for us in Europe, Brexit's made it a little more complicated, right? So mm -hmm. 
Um, initially, I did set up a Spanish company because I was going to be um, domiciled there as well. And we ran it for a couple of years through a Spanish company for, for a variety <laughs> of reasons, not least the, the tax system there. Um, we switched that back to a UK entity because it was just easier for us understanding the UK tax of the work. Yeah. Um, I'd say work out where you are. If, you, if you're going to be physically based somewhere for a long time, you know, can you get away with having, having your company somewhere else if you're, if you're resident there? Yeah. It depends. The rules are different from country mm -hmm. to country. You really do research stuff. You don't want to get caught out getting double yeah. taxation or anything like that. Yeah, don't um, make, make sure you don't stay over, overstay your stay and then you're, you're having to actually pay because um, we've got Spanish residency as well. So we have to be really careful about how mm -hmm. long we're staying in a certain place. And obviously, like James said, with Brexit now, it makes it even, it makes for Europe, Europeans, it makes it, well, us going into Europe, it makes it a lot harder. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's not always something that, um, it's not always easy to find information about that. So um, no, no. it's very valuable when you get to speak with someone who's had experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're coming towards the end of our session. Um, and there's one question I always ask at the end. Um, what is one piece of advice you would give to, um, I guess, people that are, are looking to change their career? Or so obviously we're the our our members are digital nomads. So, what one piece of advice would you give to people that are perhaps looking to transition into a remote work lifestyle or setting up retreats? Um. I would say, um, I actually did a post on this today, so it's quite relevant. I would say, don't let the fear of the unknown and going outside your comfort zone scare you. Um, we can't be comfortable and grow. They're two opposing states. So just get used to feeling, uh, being uncomfortable as you change and evolve and you take mm -hmm. that step is completely natural. It's a natural signpost that you're about to expand into a newer version of yourself. And there's no pain like the pain of regret. You can, you can have that fear in that knot in the stomach, but I tell you what, the fear of regret and not doing it in years' time will be way worse than taking that step forward with fear, through fear, passing through it, expecting yourself to feel uncomfortable as you grow. Um, that's much worse um, than just going for it now, but just expect to feel uncomfortable mm. um, and get used to it. You do get, the more risks you take, we're naturally risk averse as human beings. Um, it's the way we're designed, but the more risks you take, the easier you, um, the more you get used to them. Uh, I would say to people, like, um, do some some future pacing work. So, you know, if you've got this burning desire to go and do this thing, play it forward and think, if I if I do go and do it, what will it, what will my life look like in in one year, two years, five years down the line if I take if I take this risk? But don't also people tend to. Um, what we do, we overplay the risks, right? So this is a really useful exercise to do. We always think, oh, if I go and do this thing, then what's the worst thing that can go wrong? That's probably the most likely thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Actually, write it down, you know, if that worst thing ha did happen, mm -hmm. and here's the thing, again, we're hardwired to catastrophize. We always think if we're taking a risk, the worst thing is going to be what happens to us. It rarely, rarely is. But even if it does, go, okay, how would I deal with that? What would I change it? How would I do it? And you will come out with a list of things. What this does, it calms your subconscious because... This fear state comes from your subconscious because you're about to do something outside of your comfort zone. It's uh, your subconscious is going, no, stay where you are. Here's a really scary thought about what could go wrong. <laughs> you actually rationally can be like, well, if that thing did happen, I could do this, 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 and that's the way out of it. That really, really helps you. Mm. And actually just play it forward, like Jason, just mm. think if I don't do this, what's my life going to look like? How am I going to feel 10 years down the line if I haven't started now? And the best mm -hmm. time to start was yesterday. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I think that was a fantastic piece of advice. Um, so thank you so much uh, for joining me today and thank you everyone who joined to watch. Um, if anyone wants to get in contact with you guys or is interested in one of your retreats, what is the best way for them to find you or get in contact? Uh, I've got my profile there in, in the Nomads community, but um, you can just find us at uh, the website. Easiest one to say is themidlifementors.com and you can email james at or Claire at the midlife mentors.com. And yeah, we can talk to you about any of those. We, we could directly to our retreats, talk to you about retreat mentoring yeah. or coaching or, or running, uh, you know, being on one of our programs. So yeah, yeah, but That's check awesome. out 38 Degrees North as well. Like we're on, um, it's all written. So 38 Degrees North is all written. That's our website, 38DegreesNorth.com. And we're on um, Instagram, we're on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. So you can find us across a ridiculous amount of channels. And you can find that podcast as well, the Midlife Mentors podcast.
Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, so thank you again for joining me today. And if anyone wants to join us for next week, I will be speaking with Sam Naif um, about his app that he's developing to help raise awareness of climate change. So mm -hmm. thank you again, Claire and James, for joining me. And thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.